Uh, so thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk about the state of ARM uh, and a 64-bit view of what does, doesn't work. Um, the intentions for this to be a little bit more interactive. I'll go through a few points and try and spur some discussion. So who am I? Uh, my day job, I'm a senior principal engineer at, uh, at ARM. I focus on open source, so distributions, upstream projects, uh, and uh, downstream consumers of open source are my primary focuses. Um, I've been involved with OpenSUSE for quite a long time. 6.2 is my first distro, uh, and unfortunately I've not been able to get away uh, since then. Um, I'm also known to have some questionable fashion choices. Um, it kind of goes on through different events. Um, and my homemade mankini that's a bit difficult to see on the screen uh, was my last uh, design outfit. Uh, but I'm also European, um, in spite of 52% of my compatriots. So that's about me. Uh, what else am I going to talk about? Um, I'm going to cover briefly what uh, ARC64 otherwise known as ARM64 is, uh, give an overview of the software status, um, things that we know do work, things that have been optimized, things that we know are broken. Um, we don't necessarily know what's missing um, because without a bit of feedback, we can't do anything about it. Uh, a brief um, overview of the current hardware status. Um, and I'm going to touch briefly on benchmarking as well. Uh, and then there's uh, next steps, which is kind of where you guys come in for the discussion part. So for those that aren't aware uh, of what ARC64 is, um, it's also known as ARM64, the kernel space. It's ArchArm64. Uh, Debian and Ubuntu use ARM64 moniker rather than AR64. Um, it's part of the eighth revision of the ARM architecture known as ARMv8. Um, it was a ground up design of the architecture, um, but ensuring that there was backwards compatibility. Uh, and ARM have come out with three 64-bit uh, uh, CPU designs so far. Uh, it's the Cortex-A53, the A57 and the A72. Um, and the diagram there just shows the evolution from ARMv5 all the way through with the new features being added in each revision and ensuring that there's always backwards compatibility. You'll notice that under ARMv8, um, there is an A32 and an A64. Um, A32 uh, is the 32-bit implementation of the ARMv8 architecture. Uh, and we recently announced the Cortex-A35, I believe it is, um, which is a pure 32-bit implementation. So what's the software status on ARM64? It's mostly working, basically. Uh, almost everything builds. Um, so, as I overheard uh, not too long ago, if it builds, it's done. Uh, not quite. Um, so, if you look at OBS, there's a bit of disparity between x86 and AR64 there. Um, but we are pretty close. So what we know is that the obvious things that people care about are done. Um, and because that is the large chunk of software out there, the items that need to be ported are smaller, but part of the reason is that they're also much harder to port. The low-hanging fruit has now pretty much been picked. 
So that's great, software's ported, but does it run? If it's got integrated unit tests, it should run. Um, a lot of the software hasn't necessarily been tested um, because not everyone runs all the software that's available. Uh, and some people that run some of those niche case uh, software workloads may not have tried it on ARM yet. Um, even if it does run, there's a large chance that it may not run optimally. So you're not gonna get the best out of that software. But if we look at what has been optimized um, to run well on ARM, uh, most of the key languages are there. Um, OpenJDK, uh, C, C++, Node.js um, is there. Obviously the compilers, both GCC and LLVM uh, have been optimized. The kernels had a lot of uh, optimization added to it, especially in the areas of crypto, RAID 6, uh, and there's continual work going on, obviously, in the kernel to ensure that more is optimized to run uh, as well as possible. And if you look further up the stack, uh, actual application stacks, you've got OpenSSL, uh, Ceph, uh, Hadoop, and Zen uh, have all been added uh, Ceph and Hadoop especially have uh, improved CRC uh, performance. And the Zen code base on ARM64 is much smaller than it is on x86. It was a, a relatively fresh uh, implementation of the Zen hypervisor. Well, that's all good, but what's the difference really on optimized code versus uh, straight out of the box. So if we look at what some of our friends over in Debian have done uh, using their botch uh, application, which is part of their uh, uh, QA side of things, it's written no camel, and if you use the fallback C uh, implementation of OCaml, uh, it runs in just under five hours. Uh, but if you're using the native optimized OCaml, it only runs in one hour and 15. Uh, so there is a vast performance improvement using optimized native code. May not be rocket science, but some people don't actually grasp the relevance there. So there's quite a bit that has been ported, but not optimized yet. Um, Lua, Rust, uh, Golang, um, they've not quite uh, had the care and attention needed to get the most out of them. Uh, recently, Mono uh, had been released upstream with full ARM64 support. Um, so that's probably one of the newer porting additions to the, uh, the stack. Um, Wookie, who works at ARM and is also a Lenaro assignee, uh, spends his life dealing with ARM64 builds. Uh, and at Lenaro, a couple of years ago, they spent almost a full year on going through uh, assembler uh, code to find out which software packages had assembler in there that were just getting in the way. Uh, and rather than trying to fix the assembler code, it's much easier, much cleaner just to remove it. Uh, a lot of the time it's superfluous. Um, Lenaro are running a competition. Um, if you go to performance.lenaro.org uh, for helping in performing, improving even the performance of software on ARM64. So, what pieces do we know are missing? Um, we know Lua JIT still does not run on ARM64. Uh, there's quite a few network related applications that leverage uh, Lua JIT now. Um, that is being worked on. Uh, Lenaro is working with Upstream to try and drive that through. Golang currently is moving to an SSA backend uh, for the Go compiler. Uh, 
when that gets released in 1.7, it will not have uh, support for ARM64. Um, it will fall back to uh, the existing version 1.6. Um, but we are working with Upstream uh, to get uh, the SSA backend ported across to ARM. Uh, that's expected in Golang 1.8, which is due next year, I believe. Um, and as I mentioned, Mono's been ported, but within OpenSUSE, it's not been packaged yet. Um, so uh, a lot of the unresolvables that I showed earlier on are Mono uh, dependencies. Um, so that should hopefully bring us much, much closer now to uh, what's available in X86. So software's all good, but can you run it on anything? Uh, it depends. So if you've not got any space, what do you do? Can you use an EC2 instance or something? Yes. Uh, run above from OVH. Uh, use Thunder X uh, systems, um, so you can get uh, VMs on there uh, if you want to use them as build host, have them uh, as your VPS, uh, and of course uh, you can use the OBS to build your software. Uh, it's running a mixture of uh, Applied Micro XGene ones and Seattle uh, ALM hundreds. So you've got a choice of cloud-based uh, infrastructure, uh, if you wish. But you've got a big desk, and you like to see blinky lights. Um, it's quite soothing uh, to help with your bug reports. There's a wide variety now of hardware that you can get that's running on uh, uh, that's running AR64. So. It depends on, out of that list, what your budget is. If you won the lottery, you could go for an HP Moonshot, kind of sitting around just over 10 grand. Uh, you can go a little bit lower and go for the Gigabyte H270. It's around the $5,000 mark. That's four sleds, each with two sockets, each socket's 48 cores, so that's 96 cores per sled. Um, it's 384 cores, roughly, um, if my maths works out. That's still a little bit too expensive. That's fine. We can go a little bit lower. 3,000 uh, for dual socket, 96 cores, a bit more disk space, etc. Still a bit on the pricey side. We can go for soft iron overdrive 3,000. Um, I've got one, uh, and it runs beautifully. Um, or you can go for an Applied Micro XE1 dev platform, a little bit more desktop uh, size form factor. Or you can go for a single socket, uh, one new server from Gigabyte uh, running uh, Thunder X. And even smaller still, service form factor um, is the R120 as well, uh, which again runs Thunder X, uh, produced by Gigabyte. If you're not keen on form factor, you can buy the MP30 from Gigabyte running XGene 1 and put that in whatever chassis you desire. Uh, you can put it in your desktop system uh, and put in a PCI graphics card, and you can use that as your desktop. The Overdrive 1000 just announced. Um, it's a nice, small desktop form factor. Uh, great for testing software out, writing code on, running, use it as a home server. It's up to you. More bare bones is the 96 boards cello uh, from LaMaker. Um, that's very similar to the Overdrive 1000. It has a few additional pieces, um, like an exposed PCI slot, but it's just a single board computer. Uh, you don't get any hard drive, any case, etc. Uh, so it's kind of Beaglebone-esque, but grown up. 
or you can go for some of the smaller 96 boards, like the high key, uh, which comes in two variations uh, from LaMaker, a one gig at $75 or a two gig version at $9. Um, it's very much targeted at the uh, more embedded side of usage. Um, and the same with Qualcomm's Dragon Board 410C from uh, 96 boards. Uh, that again, $75. Or you can go a little bit less, $35, you get the Raspberry Pi 3. And probably the cheapest one at the minute is the Pi 64. You know, two variations, half a gig or a gig of RAM, and it depends on your budget, $15, $30. So I've got my hardware, I've got my software. How do I test how well it all performs? Benchmarking is not simple. It's very easy to gain. Um, you need to ensure that you have equivalent pa platforms if you want to do comparisons. If it's not like for like or as close as possible, there's not much point in doing a comparison. And when you're doing your benchmarking or your tests, make sure you do it over a set period of time longer than one minute. Um, it's, you will find variations as you repeat your tests over and over and over again. So you'll need to amortize your results. You can't just take, well, that looks like the best one, I'll just take that one. And you need to pick a real world metric and one that's common across all the platforms that you want to look at. If you're just going to pick something that's specific to ARM, yet you want to compare it against Power, MIPS, x86, whatever, or a different ARM platform, you need to ensure that that metric is common across the platforms that you want to test. Um, and at the end of the day, if you know of good benchmarks, please let me know, um, because there's a wealth of benchmarks out there, spec in, spec, you know, et cetera, but they're not really representative of real world use cases. Um, if an application has a good uh, benchmarking setup, please let me know, that'd be great to find out. There have been a couple of articles on benchmarking uh, since uh, Cabium uh, publicly announced production availability of their Thunder X platforms. Uh, one was by Intel, where they went through a third party to obtain a system, and within that, they openly admitted that they have no idea how to tune the system, so, yeah, your mileage may vary, but we know how to tune our Intel systems, and when we tune our Intel systems and run this software workload, it looks much better than these really crappy numbers that you can get on this Thunder platform. Not quite like for like. Um, and there has been uh, another one where it's a little bit more evenly balanced, so uh, recommend you read the, uh, the next platform on that. So that's my brief run through of what the current status is, where we know we're at. Um, now this is where the interaction comes. So, does anybody have any questions? Or does everybody want to get outside to the paddling pool? So the question was, how much open source is in the stack? And is there any uh, black spots that I would rather not cover? So with the design of ARMv8 and the concerted targeting of the enterprise space, because as uh, Norman Fraser mentioned, that we're traditionally mobile space, which is very black boxy. Um, we knew fine well, moving into the enterprise space, we need to be as uh, close as possible to existing architectures so that for people to 
migrate to, implement on ARM servers, it needs to be as seamless a move as possible. So the stack is as open as possible. We have open uh, specifications for base server systems, uh, so that uh, dictates to be compliant, you must ensure that uh, you use EFI, etc., and other standard policy-based things. We've all gone one step further with uh, server-based boot recommendations, where we make some recommendations on what you should do for your boot process. Not everyone agrees with that, which is fine. Um, but there's open firmware available. Um, there's, you know, we push everything that ARM does, push, we push that upstream. Lenaro, who ARM work with, who's a, a non-profit engineering organization that is made up of lots of ARM partners in lots of different segments, they push as much as they can upstream. Um, I think they're in the top five of the Linux kernel contributions now, have been for a year or so. Um, and they work in multiple areas, uh, both low-level stack and higher up uh, in user space. So we try and keep everything as open as possible uh, because we know it will bite us squarely if we don't. Uh, we may not be as quickly as one would like, but we do our best. Could you say a few words about the West African country? <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> Are there any plans to provide an ARCH32 build on OpenSUSE? Um, so, possibly, um, nothing has been decided. Um, obviously, with Leap moving to 64-bit, uh, so Leap is only on ART64, but there's nothing stopping anybody maintaining a 32-bit version of Leap if they wanted to, but it's going to be a lot of hard work. Okay, so work in progress. Thank you. Uh, so for an ARCH32 build, it's still, yeah, it's certainly possible. There's no ARCH32 hardware yet um, available in the market, um, but that will be coming pretty soon. So one question for everyone here is, does anybody know of software that does not work on AR64 that they would like. Crickets. Excellent, so we're all good there. Um, works for me. Um, yeah, any other questions? Comments? Flames? Love? No, perfect, thanks.